It's a sacrilege. It is a sacrilege. You know, my wife and I, I'm sure my wife, she won't mind me telling this story. As a matter of fact, we've told the story together here on Cafeteria Catholics uh, previously. Uh, actually, more than once. So she won't mind me talking about it. But prior to my wife and I being married, we lived in sin. We were fornicating. Okay, my wife, <laughs> my wife and I. We were fornicating prior to entering into the, sac the sacrament of marriage. Okay? And after we got married, we returned to the church. And during our spiritual journey, during our journey back into the Catholic Church, we wanted to be a part of Eucharistic adoration, perpetual Eucharistic adoration. Wanted to be a part of it, but our diocese, unfortunately at the time, did not offer perpetual Eucharistic adoration. But lo and behold, a little church here in the Diocese of Lexington, Kentucky, by the name of St. Luke Catholic Church, decides, hey, we are going to introduce perpetual Eucharistic adoration in this diocese. And so my wife and I, we wanted to be a part of that. We felt like we were being called in our spiritual journey. We were being called in that direction. So we wanted, wanted to be a part of it. And so we find out that St. Luke Catholic Church is having a Mass, and they are going to be talking about, uh, you know, uh, this opportunity for, per for perpetual Eucharistic adoration. And so we decide we're going to go to this Mass. Father starts talking about the Eucharist, and he's talking about, you know, uh, uh, the fullness of the sacrament, you know, and how the, the Eucharist is the source and summit of our faith and so forth. And suddenly he shifts the conversation over to marriage. And he says that if you were living together prior to entering into the sacrament of marriage that you've made a sacrilege out of a sacrament I had never heard this before and at this point my wife and I we had been attending uh, church attending mass at uh, the Cathedral of Christ the King here in the Diocese of Lexington Kentucky and uh, we had never heard this right so you know we look at each other we're squirming in our seats but father you know, he, he uses this term, you make a sacrilege out of a sacrament. I'd never heard that before, okay? And so I call Father Bush later. I call him on the phone. And uh, not to uh, rebuke him, you know, there, there's a lot of people, when a good priest goes up there and teaches the teaching of the Catholic Church and puts forth what it is that the Church teaches, they are often rebuked by the congregation, members of the congregation. But uh, this is not what I called them for. I wanted to find out more about it, right? I'd never heard this before. Making a sacrilege out of a sacrament. So he, you know, he tells me about it. Hey, you know, the Eucharist is holy. It's the holy Eucharist. Eucharist. It is the source and summit of our faith. And you cannot partake of any sacrament in the state of mortal sin. So this was news to me. I'd never heard this before, Okay. But we make a sacrilege out of a sacrament. And this is exactly what we have going on here with the joy of love. And how am I here? I was talking about a uh, riot. <laughs> well, because this is a form of looting. We are making a sacrilege out of a sacrament when we are living in adultery in a second marriage and we partake of the Eucharist. We make a sacrilege out of a sacrament. This is church teaching. This is the teaching of the Catholic Church. As a matter of fact, I posted an article not long ago on Facebook where uh, Cardinal Burke actually re he referred to footnote 351 of the joy of love as sacrilege. If it was meant, and we now know that it was actually meant in the way and we thought that it might be meant, that those living in adultery could receive the Eucharist. 
And Cardinal Burke, he referred to this as sacrilege. And he got a lot of flack on this, making this comment, by members of mainstream Catholic media, right? Got a lot of flack on it. And the fact of the matter is, he was espousing the teaching of the Catholic Church. He was giving voice to the teaching of the Catholic Church. You are indeed making a sacrilege out of a sacrament, just as my wife and I made a sacrilege out of the sacrament of matrimony, holy matrimony, by entering into that sacrament in mortal sin, not in a state of grace. And we regret that today. We regret it, but it is a, a, a fact, it's truth. And when you hear that, you know, sitting in that pew at that time and listening to Father Bush saying that we, essentially we, my wife and I, we made a sacrilege out of a sacrament. You know, that's a fork in the road. You hear that and you have a choice. Either you accept it or you, you know, uh, in your hubris you reject that teaching and you say what's father know he doesn't know what he's talking about right and you go back to the cathedral of christ the king where you feel comfortable where you don't squirm in your pew because you are not hearing the truth either you go back there or you say hey i am getting meat and potatoes catholicism here in saint luke's catholic church in the diocese of lexington kentucky and so therefore I am going to leave that popcorn Catholicism over there at the Cathedral of Christ the King, and I am going to partake of meat and potatoes Catholicism. Hair on your chest Catholicism. That's what I want, right? I don't want that fluff over there. I want to be the best possible Catholic that I can be. In order for me to do that, I need what? I need information I need information I need the truth I don't need fluff I need a full course meal to sustain me I want the truth this is the only way that we can be true Catholics the best possible Catholics that we can be the only way to do that is to know to understand the teaching of the Catholic church and it is a sacrilege to allow those who are living in mortal sin to receive what is holy the Eucharist is holy holy matrimony is holy my wife and I should have never never entered into the sacrament of marriage in the state of mortal sin and we were given the option. Priest who married us, Father List, here in the Diocese of Lexington, he gave us the option to go to confession. And at the time, I didn't want to hear any of that stuff, right? Confession, what's he talking about? I didn't go to church, hadn't been to church since uh, the age of 10, perhaps. I was 23 at the time. I didn't want to hear that stuff. Confession, the heck do I need to go to confession for? Right? I'm here to get married. I'm not here to go to confession. Right? I'm not here to tell another man what I've done. This is the way I was looking at it. This is the way I saw it. So I didn't want to hear it. I didn't want to hear it. Thank God, through the grace of God, I came back to the church. I learned the truth. Thanks in part to Father Bush here in the Diocese of Lexington. We have some very good priests here in the Diocese of Lexington, Kentucky. How am I? I'm so far away from riots in North Carolina, am I not? <laughs> right? I'm so far away from it. But maybe not, because there's looting going on in our church. There's riots going on in our church. There's a fight going on for the teaching of the Catholic Church.